Hey, this is Josh Middleton from Architects and you're watching Loudwire. So the first riff or song that made me want to play guitar, um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint that exactly because I was eight when I started playing guitar. Around that time, around being like eight years old, my friend at school gave me a cassette tape. He was like, check out my brother's band. And it wasn't his brother's band, it was Nirvana. It was yeah, it had like Smells Like Teen Spirit, In Bloom, and then some Prodigy songs on there. And I think he was trying to convince me that both those bands were all his brother's band. Anyway, I kind of half believed him. The first riff I learned, I don't know if I'd classify this as a riff, but Radiohead, uh, Street Spirit, the picking thing. Um, that was like one of the first things I learned, which is still kind of tricky actually, like just to remember all the, the picking, I haven't really practiced that in a long time. I had three guitar teachers growing up. Um, the, the main one that I, you know, really did most of my learning with was a guy called Nick Collings, who I still speak to, um, from when I was about 14 to 17 years old. That's when I did like most of my practicing and like felt like I was really leveling up. And then after that, I went to ACM here in the UK, um, Academy of Contemporary Music, and I learned, I did a high diploma in guitar. And then from there on, I was just teaching myself stuff from YouTube videos. In terms of techniques that I struggled with early on, the first one would have just been bending because I learned to play on a normal sized um, acoustic steel strung guitar and I was, uh, yeah, like eight. So trying to just bend on those big steel strings was hard enough with my tiny eight-year-old hands but um even now when i pick up an acoustic steel string and i go to bend i'm like damn this is hard so uh yeah definitely just bending was hard um and then the, the next thing like you know years on from that that i remember struggling with was learning uh sweet picking which is something that i'm kind of known for now in solosis anyway i remember just practicing it and just not getting anywhere and just being like oh, i give up and then a few weeks later just went to try it again and I just could do it. And it was just like all the muscle memory had just like gone in and I had learned how to do it. Um, just like overnight almost. So that was really cool. That was kind of another pivotal moment for my uh, learning. So in terms of favorite riffs when I was learning, uh, when I was a kid, I was really into like um, death metal. So I'd be doing a lot of like tremolo pick riffs and I'd always be like picking from my elbow instead of more from my wrist and then when I learned um battery by Metallica that like really honed in my like right hand technique so just getting the so yeah that that riff is responsible for getting my uh, right hand chops up to speed and just learning how to do as soon as I could do that, just, yeah, the world was my riff oyster. Another riff that I used to play a lot was a similar kind of thing, just having that kind of gallop in there was the shedding skin riff. That riff was another one where just getting that kind of technique down was um, just really important to me, and I just kind of really enjoyed the sound of those kind of galloped choke rhythm. The first guitar solo I attempted to learn was the Smells Like Teen Spirit one and I remember when I was about eight years old um, I performed Smells Like Teen Spirit at a school event thing and uh, I was just had an acoustic guitar like on a strap so it was like this big and played the whole of um, Smells Like Teen Spirit unaccompanied so in the verses it was just an acoustic guitar and me going and just you know, waiting for the next, because there's no drums, bass, or vocals, which are the main, you know, components to the verses of that song. Um, so that must have been tedious for people to watch. But yeah, so the solo, um, I probably can't remember. So yeah, those bends, I probably would have not managed very well on that acoustic uh, so that was definitely like the first solo I learned and then the next one after that would have been one by Metallica which I can't remember but just learning the it's just one of those things that most guitarists when they start out um, are just going to gravitate straight towards wanting to learn how to like tap and do that kind of stuff so my favorite riffs that I've written with architects are um, 
I guess like one of them is the opening riff to Mortal after all. <laughs> So yeah, that riff to Mortal After All was probably a riff that I definitely had before I joined Architects, and it's definitely got kind of like a deaf influence, that kind of shape. That kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's the, the verse riff that... Next, one of my favourites was um, the main riff to Royal Beggars. I just went in my room to, you know, write some music that day. I picked up the guitar, put it on my lap, and the first thing I did was just go... <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was, it was like I, I didn't write it, it was like I just plucked it out of the air. So um, I was just like, oh cool, free riff. So that riff is. So the last riff that I'll pick for one of my favorites in Architects is the one to um, Modern Misery. Just a really simple jugging one. Just a super easy riff, very kind of meathead, kind of dumb riff, but um, it's just one of the most uh, satisfying ones when we play live that I'd like always look forward to just playing that. It's just really fun to just kind of chug at that tempo, and when it kicks in, it just feels like super heavy. So, um, yeah. The verses. So my favourite riffs from the new record, um, seeing as it's not out yet, I'm just going to pick the two two riffs from the two like main singles we've released, which do happen to actually be my favourite riffs anyway. Um, so the, the first one I'll pick is Animals, which was the last song written for the record. Um, and that one, yeah, it was super quick coming together. I wrote my initial demo for the song in like half a day, sent it to Dan. He sent it back the next day with all the vocals written, demoed, um, a different chorus, and he had chopped a few parts up and um, tweaked the riff a little bit as well. Um, so that song was just like the quickest the song's ever come together. Um, and usually when that happens, it means you're onto something kind of cool. So. <laughs> So that riff's kind of uh, an interesting one. It's kind of layered up with different sounds. On the record, I tracked everything with my Kemper, and that riff has some really horrible guitars sat underneath it where I just turned the cabinet portion of the profile off and it sounds like a direct amp into the desk, which is horrible, really horrible sound. But deliberately, I just had that on with the gain maxed out and just playing the riff underneath it. Just because we really wanted that to sound like a really horrible, cold, um, industrial kind of riff. And then there's a lot of the octave kind of effect in there for the... And the chorus is just octave pedal like this. So my next favourite pick from the new record would be the main riff to Black Lungs. This was probably the second song finished or written for the record. The first song written was Discourse is Dead, which was written way before Holy Hell was released. Um, and Black Lungs, I remember we were rehearsing at a big venue in Brighton before our big Holy Hell European and UK tour. And I was just messing around with some sounds on my Kemper and just writing stuff. And I think we'd had a discussion to try and um, write more songs in 
key the, the keys between like E and C, which is like a really great place for Sam's voice. Um, I didn't want to tune my guitar all the way down to E. That would be ridiculous. I'm not into the way that sounds personally. And playing riffs higher up or like E standard was just like not an option really because um, Architects is known for that really low, um, thick, heavy guitar tone. So that's when I came up with the idea to start using the octave pedal. I was kind of viewing a lot of the riffs to try and, you know, think of the guitar more like a synth or that kind of thing. So the octave pedal helps kind of make the wrist feel a bit more kind of quirky. Mm -hmm. 